Hello. Oh, connecting. Hello. Hey. Hi, how's it going? Hey, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, sorry. I was setting this up and I was just, I wasn't sure if like, <laughs> I, I kind of move stuff around. So I have water, <laughs> so it's just like a meme, but I was, I'm like, I'll just put something at the background. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I think it's just, can I borrow your charger? Charger, yeah, sure. And then it has Pete Buttigieg. Sorry, I nibble little holes in mine. It doesn't work anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a perfect description mm -hmm. of it. The, the uh, rap man himself, Pete Buttigieg. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't, I feel like there's people who are probably worse than him, but he's just, He's just really fun to hate. Yeah, he is. And then I think he is what transportation secretary and or that's what Biden nominated him to be. So I guess that's what his reward was for dropping out and endorsing Biden to kind of take Bernie's momentum away, you know? Yeah, I mean, that seems like a super boring one, but I think they're like, look, this is the best you're going to get. Um, and isn't he from like, Gary, Indiana, or whatever, somewhere in Indiana that's not even like a major city in Indiana. Yeah. So South I know. Bend, that, I think. Yeah. yeah. So I think I know that, especially coming from a small town where like we didn't have buses and that really sucked. I think every small town should have shitload of good transportation. But anyway, I'm not sure if that's on Pete's mind, but I feel like maybe someone who has to been taking care of like a major regional <laughs> place. Like, yeah. I don't know. You know, someone from New York or Chicago or like Los Angeles or yeah someone but I guess uh, you know South Indiana must be a, a beacon of innovation and transportation <laughs> <laughs> well yeah he's definitely he he failed upwards and yeah that was kind of his reward like you're kind of alluding to he has no experience in the issues of like transportation and the people I guess that were also being considered for it were people who were heading transportation apartments in these big cities but yeah i just failing failing forward that yeah that's kind of peep booty judge in a nutshell i think yeah i i like i've joked about that before but i don't think i think i've seen it as prevalent as i have with him um because i don't know yeah again it feels like it was so weird and the only and he only might have won Iowa that was like an entire mess like yeah. I'm surprised people talk about you know stealing the election with Trump and like doing it doesn't even remember the shady company mm -hmm. that like was involved with that with like Pete <laughs> and it was just and I'm like we never really dug deep into that yeah because I think one of the people on Pete Booty Judge's campaign was connected to that same company that yeah handled the Iowa voting machines and created all those issues that said he won when it was actually Bernie probably should have won but yeah pretty interesting um so what do you think about have you heard about like Trump vetoing that huge like monstrous spending bill unless people get two thousand dollars what do you think about yeah. that oh god it's Okay, so I have a lot of mixed feelings about that. Well, first, what the fuck? I remember someone sent me that video on Twitter, and I was just like, whoa. I'm like, I mean, I was like, what the fuck? It's, uh, it's like, I shouldn't be surprised by now. So it's sort of like this thing where it's like, okay, this is just a 
crass political move also but at the same time you're like well this crass political move maybe it's more beneficial to us than this you know sanction one from um the front congress but yeah. at the same time i don't know you know is he gonna change his mind is he not gonna care later because it's been a little bit since like it has been like floating around like his white house aides stopped him from yeah. Yep. um yeah so i feel like he if he really cares so much he would have like really really fought on it before he did that i think obviously a thousand dollars it's not even enough but it would be amazing what i'm just worried about is that i like at least they would just fast track it give people at least six hundred dollars right now and, and like two thousand as soon as possible but i'm just afraid that people are not even going to get the 2000 and then they might not even end up getting the 600. It will, it's just so awful. It's so dystopian that I'm, it might end up that way. Yeah. Um, I feel like someone mentioned, I'm not so sure, but someone did mention that um, maybe this was also sort of like him trying to obfuscate the fact that he like pardoned 15 people yesterday or something like <laughs> <Yeah>. that. <laughs> but I, I don't know, the stimulus like, the pardoning kind of sucks, but I'm kind of more worried about the stimulus thing just because uh, how do you feel? Because it is it is kind of funny and um, it, I, he hasn't said anything publicly, but I'm sure Mitch McConnell is like squ squirming inside and that <laughs> so much happiness. That's my Christmas present. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, because I'd also heard that he had been kind of wanting to do this behind the scenes, but his advisors had kind of told him not to do that because it could kind of torpedo the talks completely. But I mean, I think it's pretty interesting though that he is, at least on this issue, to the left of a lot of the Democrats who voted for that $600 yeah. bill. The only two Democrats actually voted against it were Rashida Tlaib and then, um, Tulsi Gabbard and yeah. you know uh, Tlaib's reasons where it was not you know nearly enough help for the working people which is completely accurate and Tulsi Gabbard's reason why was because it's like this 5,000 page monstrous bill they got like that day and we're supposed to vote on it that night I don't, and as we've seen there's so many like horrible things like packed into it you know yeah, oh, I didn't think she had time to read it because just 10 days before she was just busy pushing through this um, weird and transphobic thing. But yeah, like yeah. I'm glad there were people who did it. Like, don't get me wrong. I think we should definitely hold accountable um, representatives and senators that did. I know that she's never going to answer me online, but uh, that rep or rep, uh, I can't remember her name, but you know who I'm talking about. She can be like, on and off, hit or miss, uh, Jamila, she's like a, a rep or, or a senator or something. Um, do you know what, oh, from Washington State? Yeah. Oh, Pramila Jayapal, is that who you're talking yeah. about? Yeah, so usually she's she's pretty on point with things. There's actually some great video scenes, but she like did vote for it. And on Twitter, I was just like, why did you vote on this bill that yeah only doesn't give us any money but we're also going to like um you know it's it, it i mean we could talk about all the horribleness but one thing that yeah that was surprising was like selling our digital rights yep. for six hundred dollars for six hundred dollars <laughs> so i want to be like i think we should definitely be like be like yeah what the fuck why would you vote for this but also not too impressed with tulsi but i think that's just um, also, I think she's not gonna. She decided not to run, so yeah. Uh, like, I guess being cynic, she's probably like whatever. But yeah, it is surprising so many Democrats went to like um, do it. I feel like I think of like especially someone who's yeah very left of probably the Democrats. There's like two right wing parties here. Yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, but I do feel like I want to hold them accountable, but I feel like I don't want people to forget how horribly monstrous like uh, the Republicans have been. Like, I'm, I don't know, like, it's almost funny. I'm sure they're both psychopaths, which I don't even like using that language. <laughs> As like, yeah. yeah, like, I think it is kind of ableist, but whatever. But no, I'm sure this is like, sincerely, I never call someone, but I think Mitch McConnell must be because <laughs> 
I'm like, um, you know, why, why are you are such, such, and the, the and I just want to go to the, to the town of Kentucky. I'm like, can you secede? Can you leave? Like you are picking this horrible man and you are killing us. And like, but yeah. you know, the Republican party is, is just so toxic. Just like, you know, all these things happening before Trump. Um, it's just maybe someone else would just take his place. There's always been power hungry billionaires who are just, you know, biggest crime you ever committed against them was being born poor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and McConnell like coasted to re-election pretty easily because the Democrats in that state and nationally propped up kind of the neoliberal centrist candidate, Amy McGrath, instead of supporting the more progressive Charles Booker with very, you know, not surprising results when you actually give people a reason to vote instead of somebody who's just going to uphold the status quo. They they supported Mitch McConnell again, even though, you know, he doesn't support their interest, which, which I always find interesting. Like, you know, people oftentimes don't vote for what's in their best, you know, interest, but through some like ideological lens or, or something, it's, yeah, it's, kind of something I always think about. It's like, hmm, why why do people do that, you know? Yeah, I and that's so true. I can't remember what her name was. And I think maybe I watched like two two minutes of her debate with McConnell, but I think she also was did some also like anti Bernie or like pro Trump like yep. and, <laughs> and it's just like really I it is either because they are really dumb or they still want to keep control over us. But um they keep going and trying to gaslight everyone just like oh it's, even obama's like it's because you say defund the police defund the police and you're scaring people away yeah. um you know and it's like no because you keep you keep um you keep uh giving shitty candidates yes. it's, it's just like <laughs> a republican with like maybe like better pr and lightly at that and most of them are still super smug and super awful so of course people are going to be turned off and then the other guys at least since since you don't have an answer why everything sucks because the other people are like no this is the way we're going to do it together um so it's, it's, you know republicans and just right-wing conservatives just like hold on to that thing of fear mm -hmm. and then that makes them go for republicans and democrats just you know, because of them, I don't know, I'm just reading a lot of old books um, mm -hmm. recently, because I am part of this book club, but like not to super nerdy, but I was reading this thing with Trotsky, and it's like, like about morality and stuff like that, and how, you know, um, I forgot what I was going to go with it, but I think yeah oh yeah it's just like the fail like the Woodrow C are always like no this is democracy this is what, what we do but then the fail politics of the ruling class will always give rise to fascism fascism will come as a reactionary thing mm -hmm. like uh, people fear Trump like yeah you should fear him running again or even someone worse, worse or Tucker Carlson like this Biden thing is just gonna snap back into perhaps an even worse, even yep. worse time coming again, they, and that's why they lose. And that's why we have reactionaries. And that's why then they're like, how, how, why, why, why would no one like vote for like, you know, cause your policies are just as awful as um, exactly. Republicans. You're just, you know, saying I'm not a Republican vote for me. That is basically the democratic party platform is like i'm not a republican and it's almost like very coercive i think too i and that shows how morally upright they are you know yeah that was basically joe biden's playbook was that i'm not trump but i'm not offering anything of substance but i'm not trump so that's slightly better and i think that's a really good point you made about you know, Biden, his administration obviously aren't going to fight for the really substantive change that we really need in the United States. So whoever comes after is going to be a much more capable, capable fascist than Trump was, you know, they're, they're going to not be so crass and crude, and they're, they're going to be able to 
even get away with with more stuff because the Democrats keep, you know, failing the working class and keep selling them out since they've been doing um, at least since the Clinton years and probably before, honestly. Yeah, I mean, I think there's so many things in which, I mean, I fucking hate all precedents. And if you say this out loud, because of the, again, brainwashing, people will be like, even JFK, I'm like, of course, even JFK, like, remember the Cuban Missile Crisis, Bay of Pigs, okay, weirdo. Um, even Jimmy Carter is beloved, and he does have a nice, oh, shucks look to him, but even him was like, yeah, war on Iran, war in El Salvador. So yep. every time people are like, oh my gosh, Jimmy Carter, and now the neoliberals are also now even bringing back fucking Reagan too. They're like, oh my gosh. But yeah, like, um, yeah, no support since the 90s. There's because, yeah, I, honestly, to me, again, even though he was like still a warmonger, at least like with Lyndon B. Johnson, I think that was still an era where like wealth or welfare programs were still like stronger. Um, but then from the late 70s from on, and then once like Reagan like sunk his teeth into, into this, then it was it was ready him and Tasher, you know their combined powers the king and queen of neoliberalism oh. yeah and uh reagan was actually um obama always talks about how reagan was a big uh influence on him and he kind of looks up to reagan which kind of makes a lot of sense with how obama you know governed and how yeah a couple weeks ago like you pointed out he was talking about yeah, defunding the police doesn't help politically, but that's really what you're speaking up now. How about the government completely failing the working people? That just like, yeah, it really shows that centrist like brain rot. And he's not even correct on that issue because I saw a thing not too long ago. This one poll showed a majority of people in the U.S. actually support defunding the police. Like, oh, that's that that's progress, you know? Yeah, no, they try to paint it as we don't, like, most of the Floridians or people in Miami who voted for Trump also, like, voted for, like, a 15 minimum wage increase, right? Yeah. Which no Democrat offered, like, I'm not sure what happened there, if it's going to pass, but that's the thing, even, like, even, you know, right-wing Republicans, they're angry because they're also not being taken care of. I mean, not to dissolve them from their willingness to be super racist, but besides yeah. that, but it's because they also don't have anyone taking care of them as they should be, as they should be with us. So they're like, they're just, yeah, it causes them to be reactionary because we there's nothing, you have nothing. And at least, and you feel frustrated and you don't know what's going on. So again, it's just easy to like blame someone. Did you see, oh God, talking about Biden, I don't know, but did you see, I shouldn't be surprised, but I was so mad and I'm so mad about it. That what he's like, well, we can't undo the Trump uh, policies since the one was just yep. like, oh my God. Yeah. And uh, I remember I was looking on Twitter and then people and so many neolibs are trying to be like, well, you know, it, it's like we, we, we can't undo it in one day, even though that's what he promised. Yeah. And he's also like, they're also like, well, we don't want to be like too free. You know, like we have to have a rational immigration policy or a rational immigration policy to keep the kids in cages as long as it's not Trump. Okay. Yeah. And it just feels like it's it's awful. I don't know. It's an immigrant for me. It just hurts because I feel like no one cares unless the issues can be used for their, you know, propaganda. Yeah. Um, and then you're completely forgotten. I mean, I think there's been so much mutual and communal support and that's amazing. And I think that makes me very happy. It's just knowing that these people say that and then they're like, they, um, but it makes sense that Obama would be a fan of Reagan. He's like, <laughs> he was also like super war, a war monging. I just, um, yeah, like, I mean, I know it's a joke, but it, you know, the whole like many wedding, and I know it's cliche, but it's just so awful. It's so awful that you're at your wedding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, can you imagine the outrage and? Uh, prepare for a full-scale invasion if someone like bomb a wedding in america yeah. or germany or whatever but like how many people even know about that or even think that is it a joke or or i'm like oh my gosh no this is a thing they actually happen 
And I remember watching this documentary where he's like, no, Obama almost took, he's like, you know, a sheep of command, they can get involved as much as as little as they want, but Obama really wanted to get in there. He said he had like a strategic pleasure of picking the targets and that's just, <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really nauseating. Um, I don't know, yeah, and that makes sense, but it's all like, and you're right, this thing like, oh, in Joe Biden's entire campaign being like, I'm not Trump. And now I feel like another car he gets to blaze at the beginning or if his entire term, if he doesn't do anything, he's gonna be like, oh, you know, Trump left me a huge mess here. I feel like he's gonna play that for as long as he can. And I'm pretty sure he will play, probably play it for at least the next three years, if not longer. Yeah, that's yeah, pretty interesting about Obama because he actually won the Nobel Peace Prize, but when he took office, the United States was in two wars. He escalated to seven. His drone strikes had like a 90% civilian death rate. He was even ordering, uh, I think Anwar al-Awlaki was his name, uh, a US citizen, uh, overseas, I forget which country, Obama ordered him to be assassinated with the drone strike without any type of due process or anything like that. But this is like really shows, I guess, how worthless maybe the Nobel Peace Prize is. If I it's mean, I, I, wish I could remember his name, but yeah, like the prime minister of Ethiopia. And also something that we haven't been talking about. Do you know what's going on in Ethiopia? uh not not a whole lot no okay and that's fine I just kind of like became obsessed with it and I kind of forgotten about it but so in Ethiopia there's like a lot of ethnic groups just like you know like most countries that were colonized so now they just leave live in these imaginary borders that are forced upon them as countries so there's a bunch of different ethnic groups and then like 20 years ago they were with an ethnic group separated and became the, their own country, Eritrea. Mm -hmm. Probably not pronouncing that right. But then he got the Nobel Peace Prize for stopping that um, stopping that war. And then immediately started a war against the Turgani people uh, because he wanted to do this. And the, one of the scariest thing about COVID, and I want to look back at it, it's like how much political abuse there was because there's been so much that he's like, oh, because of COVID, I think we should just become one party instead of all these parties, which before was like it represented everyone in a way that could be more equal, not just like a majority thing. Mm -hmm. But he basically started, you know, attacking and then for days they wouldn't let any aid go there. And he had a Nobel Peace Prize, so I guess that's the first time that they act Nobel Peace Prize actually said something about someone and be like, homie, you shouldn't do this, but that's that's about it. And it's so funny, everyone was just like, oh my gosh, this is crazy, there's gonna be an ethnic conflict. This is so, but like, if it's not to, you know, overthrow someone or steal the, their oil, they can't intervene. It's just like, it's like, oh my gosh. And they're just, but it's just them being, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, and never doing anything. They're like, well, you know, the UN says that in three days, this leader is just gonna massacre this entire group of people. It looks really bad. We should sternly tell them not to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's infuriating because they're willing to take action with other things, you know? Yeah, it's definitely if there's no political advantage or if it doesn't fit their kind of ideological narrative, people in power don't really care about you know, the suffering that's going on, kind of like the U.S. support for Saudi Arabia and all the aid and arms sales we give to them and how they're perpetuating that, you know, genocide in, in, in Yemen, like that's, yeah, that's really disgusting and gross. And then kind of going back to the point you made about, you know, Biden going back on his promises around, you know, immigration and stuff like that's, I, yeah, it just made me think of people saying like, how how long is it going to take liberals to stop talking about like kids in cages? And it's like, he's not even in office and that's kind of already like happening. Like that's, but yeah. again, I mean, that, that all that family separation stuff did start under Obama Biden presidency. Yeah. And I think even his first four years or second four years, Obama has actually deported more people 
than Trump has, which yeah. again, yeah. we weren't we weren't hearing about that from liberals during his his term because he had he had a D next to his name, you know. Yeah. Well, I wish that before I I could have like I wish before I would have um I would have been born watching Democracy Now. I feel like I would have known more about things if I did. <laughs> I mean, like I can see through your lies. But I mean, they gaslight you into like, no, 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 that's just like a conspiracy theory or like, no, 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 that's kind of like, um, you know, because I think for me, like um, intersection and identities are so important, but then they also co-opt or like the identities and then play identities politics with us. They're like, oh, you know, this person is the first uh, woman to be head of the CIA. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, that's like, it, that's some imperial bullshit that I don't care for. Um, or like, you know, the first Hispanic person on head of Homeland Security. I'm like, that's so gross. I don't know, my probably talked about this. <laughs> I probably ranted about this last time too, but yeah. It, it's so true and like it did start with Obama and it's not like Obama had any sort of like um like co compassion for any of these people and like I'm pretty sure Obama's father was an immigrant and I don't know it's like as a child immigrant and like you can even see it with Bernie um because his parents uh did come around World War, before World War Two, or when World War Two, and then, yeah, yeah, they were immigrants. So I think for him that's really important. But with Obama, it's just so surprising that he didn't really have any sort of compassion for. Um, oh my God, I'm an immigrant. Maybe I should just. I mean, no. The the video that's still uncanny is him as a senator saying like the Armenian genocide happened, and then him as a president being like, <laughs> we're not sure. Yeah. And then I think even, yeah, when he was campaigning for um, president in 2008, I think he even maybe supported Medicare for all at that point. And then once he got into office, like he passed basically what was Mitt Romney's plan when he was governor of Massachusetts, Romney care or Obamacare, which is just, again, another huge, massive giveaway to the pharmaceutical industry and the health insurance companies when he could have really at least fought for Medicare for all and maybe settled at that point for a public option, but he had a super majority in the Senate, a majority in the House, like he could have got so many things done. It just shows that he really is, you know, a diehard neoliberal like centrist. And that's like his legacy and his, yeah. his, his failings. It's obviously all not his fault, but his failings led to kind of Trump being able to, to get elected, you know? Yeah, no, yeah, again, I think that um, exactly his huge disappointment and I guess like maybe never put too much trust in someone, but that is also so sort of like uh, pessimistic. But I just think that with, um, with Bernie, uh oh, but no, I just think that. Even that for me, I think sometimes I'm scared that I was like, oh, I really like Bernie and that I shouldn't just like, you know, idolize this person. But with hope. there was a lot of hope. I'm sorry, like, I'm sorry that Defund the Police is not as catchy as Yes, We Can. <laughs> um, yeah. But, you know, we were so many, and I was like 14 and I couldn't vote, but we did like a, a mock, mock vote about it. And I remember my friend went to DC and he got me like, an, it was really weird, but he gifted me an Obama beanie. But, you know, now as adults and beer, like super radical, we're like, fuck this shit. But it was just like, you know, yeah, being a kid and just being like, oh, shucks, you know, everyone does really want the best for everything. And, you know, things are getting better. And then when, you know, because all you know is their propaganda. Like, yep. I want my money back from, well, no, I don't think you can get your money back from public school, but for my US history class, my professor was, or my teacher was like, I will make sure that you remember that Thomas Jefferson had red hair. <laughs> oh, and maybe you should have told me about him being a rapist and, you know. <laughs> owning um, slaves, yeah. Owning slaves, oh, but the red hair, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So for one matter, I understand why 
it's so easy to fall for these things. Because instantly, I think most people want to be nice and come together. Like uh, conservatives like to be like, oh, communism is against human nature. But I don't know. I think as social as social workers and just like being around people and people who are really caring, I've just seen you know, like people do everything to support one another. Mm-hmm. And it just comes naturally. But it, they just try so hard to stamp that out to make you take this artificial thing like capitalism it's why we're all so sick it's why so many of us like would not be like you know mentally ill or stressed or like even medicare for all that's not super radical no that's and, like yeah, yeah. The, the i mean the messaging on that should be that's that's the moderate, that's the centrist position. The radical people are the ones who don't support that. They're okay with tens of thousands of people dying, people yeah. going bankrupt, spending yeah. way more than any other country and not covering everybody. Those are the radical people who don't, who want you to die and go bankrupt because you don't have health care. <laughs> yeah, like even neoliberal nations, like most of Europe is super capitalist. I mean, Germany is like what, like the third, fourth biggest economy in the world. Um, and they have this weird sort of like technocratic um, worship, but whatever, at least, so they do this thing where like, you know, water is wet. We discover the strong welfare program um, is good for capitalism because then people can be more productive. Even if you put it in their point of view, then it's like, it will be save you money. So I don't know in the US if they're just like, if they're just dumb, if Republicans or people just don't know like how, how much more it would save or or if there is like a sadistic thing about killing poor people because sometimes i'm like do you are you just smile do you go to bed smiling that you were like shouldn't have been born poor it's just so horrible yeah i mean it's yeah definitely a lot of that pull yourself up by the bootstraps mentality and if you don't make it life it's it's your fault which like no like if somebody doesn't have a house that's because like in a capitalist system that 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 doesn't matter because they're not able to pay their bills or whatever when it should be like we shouldn't be commodifying all these things that people just need to live and we have more than enough resources to give everybody on the globe you know, a high standard of living, it's just the priorities for the most part aren't there, which is really, I mean, disgusting, frankly. And it's like, yeah, what do we, what do we do to, to, to change that? I guess work within our circles, try to, try to educate other people, direct action, mutual aid, that kind of stuff. I mean, there's always all that can be done. And again, I think, because I'm always just like, why am I such a pessimist? Um, do you know the group of Russian nihilists? So they're like, so basically they're sort of like a life is useless, but they're also still socialist. <laughs> and basically they are just also, they just drink a lot. And then, you know, so the only way to, it's like, and I mean, I agree that sometimes way it's revolution, but they're like just really drunk people who are like violent revolution. And sometimes I'm like, I need to give, you know, but I think, um, again that natural instinct to take care of each other is like so core to human nature i'm amazed like you know the mutual aid has has been going on for so long this entire month like so many people could have uh been could have just been so much worth with without helping each other i saw a tweet that was like i can't believe that we pay taxes we paid taxes this year i'm like I know I'm like we should somehow all like stop paying our taxes and then just put it all together into a mutual fund or whatever because at that point um you know people care so much more about people and that's what we want than they you know they just want to make it as miserable as always um, yeah, or organize like a I don't know a student debt strike until they just cancel I mean yeah. Joe Biden, he literally has authority to cancel all student loan debt at any time. And he's coming up with like, well, maybe if you qualify, we'll cancel like 10, 10,000 of it. If you meet these qualifications, like yeah. me, just, yeah, total neoliberal mindset. You got to, you got a means test. You got to show us that you're actually yeah. deserving of this help instead of making it universal. Like it's, yeah, yeah it's disgusting. But yeah. 
yeah, it's like not even means to us because like it, because at least the what well, I don't know like maybe <laughs> there must be done the good way of testing it because yeah, Germany again basically their welfare system is like based off of like science like who cares if someone who you don't think is deserving gets like two k that's just gonna help the economy anyway um, so they're just like no no we're just gonna think but again because because I think social services especially um and you know under capitalism are just serve to make money just like in you know capitalism social services their efficiency are it's measure um how much money it's saved or made versus the quality of care the person received and that was like mind-boggling but so true it's like how it's it's just heartless it's just like like there's so many countries around the world that yeah they're just super capitalist but i feel like in america they almost want to make it make you cry or regret <laughs> or regret and make it one almost like punishment that do you really know you fucked up by not you know being a billionaire <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah i saw i saw a thing it would actually would have been like cheaper to move to Germany and like go to school there as like somebody coming from outside of the country than it is to get like a higher education in the United States like that is just trippy but not not super surprising and yeah like you pointed out most of those European countries are still very highly capitalist but at least they have you know a, a social safety net you know, more paid time off, more paternity, maternity leave, universal health care, better unemployment. And I think, you know, probably a lot of those, or well, I've seen studies, a lot of those countries are, are the happiest because people's material needs are actually taken care of to a lot greater extent than, you know, in the US. And even, um, I need to read this article, but it was about, I think it was a study from Harvard showing how people in the United States who have um, schizophrenia, like the voices that they hear are a lot more kind of aggressive and angry, kind of yeah. stuff like that compared to other countries, just because of the um, kind of environment that we live in. And yeah. wow, I never thought about that, but frankly, it makes you know a lot of sense actually. Yeah, no, like I said, it's this artificial thing that it's making us it's making us sick in every way possible. And I'm usually not a, a person who believes that they know a lot about health or like even mental health, but to me this, yeah, force like artificial thing is like, you know, it's not natural. It's, it's making us sick. It's making us be exhausted and tired. It's making us think these things are normal, that they shouldn't be. It's making us think that I remember I was in this meeting and then uh, people were complaining about like, you know, being, they did literally have a meeting where uh, my coworkers were complaining about millennials and they were like, oh man, millennials, if they have like, you know, a, a finger, if they would bring a finger, they'll have a splint and won't come in for three days. Like we would come in with broken arms. I'm like, why would you? You didn't have to. <laughs> yeah, you shouldn't. I'm really sorry that you had to, but like, why do you want that to continue for me? Like, the only re the only way I would be okay with paying my student loans if like all of that money went for like people never having to pay or having to take out loans ever again like I I would pay my money for that but <laughs> otherwise than that fuck that it's just people shouldn't have to do this and I think again part of it is just like I mean I don't think I hope this doesn't come as like classes but it's like not like everyone has to go to school but I feel like if people even just had the chance to go to school and like maybe they didn't want a degree but just learn what they wanted we would be so much they would be so much happier and I think part of it too is part of this like neoliberal scheme um where like if you take away all these classes that promote like critical thinking and stuff like that as we see Trump like people we talked about it but again if you look at the um executive thing that's like banning um you know anti-racism training like anti-racism teaching this is awful in Arizona we does actually happen in Arizona um we're like in Tucson which is actually one of the few blue cities in um in Arizona though Phoenix went blue which it's not perfect but it's a start I was so happy 
I was really happy. But um, anyway, wait, I'm sorry. Where else are I going with that? I was just this voting. Uh, well, yeah, something I. Oh, oh the anti racist thing. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. So that we had that in Arizona, and it was just so crazy to think about. We actually, in my small, in my small town, you can look it up, it's Prescott, Arizona. We had a mural where, like, the, the, the people on the board of, this, of the public school said that one of the kids looked too brown, so they needed to lighten their skin color. This for real happened. I'll try to find it for you, but yeah, this happened uh, where I'm, where I grew up for high school was in Prescott, Arizona. So, um, no, people definitely need more of this, you know. And I think again, kind of knowing the past, people help prevent the people the future. And I think it actually would be a nice way to heal together because we're all learning about this at the same time. It's not like someone has to learn about it because they're affected by it every day versus someone not really having to or even caring to or even wanting to. But if you're learning about it together, I feel like people have more of like solidarity with one another. Yeah, and we're definitely, um, at least through my K through 12 education, wasn't really taught any type of critical thinking about like our history as you know the u.s empire or foreign policy you know empire wise or any of that stuff so you really have to kind of seek out that critical mindset and i feel like one of the reasons they made education so expensive was so people weren't able to just pursue knowledge for the for the sake of learning and and enjoying it instead of like modifying it like you have to get this degree to make money instead of doing it because that's actually something you you want to do for yourself and your own personal enrichment you know yeah no Reagan actually I have to find the quote but he's like the state is not gonna uh you know be paying you to go take philosophy classes in which like maybe I'm not too fan of philosophy but you know even right there he's just literally saying it like you you being enriched for the knowledge and learning and all that not only is it easier, um, not only we're, we don't want that, we don't care for that, even though it would be nothing of our back to do it, we also want to control you and make sure that, you know, to make you think that you need us, but we, you don't, like they need you. And again, it's just, it's, it is what makes people feel so awful and I feel like, but it's like really on purpose, yeah, making education less accessible and, hammering again and again this like American exceptionalism thing. Um, I feel like so much more people would be way more left if they started looking at foreign affairs, like just looking a little bit into it, it would really open up your eyes, but most people don't <laughs> ever. Most, a lot of even leftists don't here. I, you know, it's so it's, it's, it's very alienating. And it's also, it, 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 it aris, arrest them from like developing a better worldview but because everyone's being conditioned to be like we're special we always know what's right we are the vanguard of intelligence and we always know so it's about just being different yeah and like i mean a lot of countries will actually give you like a subsidy to pay you to go to school it's like how amazing yeah Yeah. would that be and obviously like you know, this, like pretty much with anything else, it's always the most like vulnerable and marginalized and oppressed who always feel the weight of these, you know, capitalist policies. And um, I don't know, something I kind of find interesting, I'd like to get your thoughts on like the role of like violence in like revolution and social movements, or do you think it needs to be like nonviolent? Because some argue that if you, kind of stoop to the state's level and you engage in violence then you kind of lose the moral high ground and then they can just retaliate even more so i just curious what you think about about that oh my god this is great i prepare for this i'm again i feel like so embarrassed and i don't know why maybe it's again this internalization that i'm supposed to be embarrassed for like liking or reading about socialism but so the thing I was reading, like um, written by this, you know, revolutionary Leon Trotsky. Um, I don't know if, sure if you ever read anything by him. I haven't. I just I haven't like, read anything, but I did watch a kind of somewhat of a uh, biography, but it was um, like like a move this ten part kind of movie series on him on 
Netflix, which is pretty interesting and documented him like being part of the revolution and then being in exile in, in Did Mexico. it have any sort of like the capitalist leaning or was it kind of okay for the most part? Uh, it was okay for the most part and it was in like Russian so I had to read the um, oh. subtitles and stuff but not not uh, super familiar with with Trotsky or, or yeah Trotsky. No, I, and most of the things that I think um, I am with Trotsky it's like I think I started liking him without even reading anything by him because it's like for a comrade, Trotsky doesn't get along well with others. This is <laughs> something I fear a lot is alienating, especially our classmates. I think sometimes I say some up the cuff stuff that they is like, you know, I see their eyes go really big. Then <laughs> um, I felt that and then once I was talking to another one of her classmates about it and they're like, well, sometimes it's not okay to get along well with others and like, uh, so I completely um, agree, like, um, so yeah, from what I was reading, though, it is like, kind of like this morality thing. And I've never been sort of someone to be like, oh, what is morality? But this thing that I've, I've been thinking about is just like this morality that we have is forced up on us, no longer by religion, but by the ruling class to yeah. keep doing things that will like, you know, keep them in power, like, will imprison you for like stealing, like never steal, never steal. That is the worst thing you can do, even though if you don't steal, you will die. Mm -hmm. so obviously this property is more than you. Yeah. And then, or also like, or the morality of like, yeah, we talked, we like, you know, the encampments in, in the park in Seattle where uh, they're like, it's illegal to be doing this. So we're gonna really, it was one of the most horrible violent, violent things that I ever saw. So their morality is always that and it's ever shifting and they'll like, you know, go around it. So I don't really think so. I think, I think, yeah, again, I, I always get kind of scared to talk about it because I don't, and also the internet is, I think it's propaganda. I don't even know what it, what it is, but you know, being called a tanky, I don't know if I, I don't even know what that is, but anyway, um, no, I think there's like need for it. I don't think there's a, a ground of like, um, us versus them. I actually think that if we don't prepare for some sort of defense, there will be like really, really bad because we won't know what to do. Mm -hmm. And I know it sounds really bad, but there's no morality or like of protecting yourself because these people will kill you in a second. Um, they will like, like I am really surprised, but also not surprised that you know, there's not a lot of attention that time and time and time after year and even the, you know, shitty people like the FBI and like Homeland Security would be like, oh, white nationalists are the scariest like group, like white nationalists, Nazis are like far right, like attack, like the guy in El Paso who killed like 23 people. So because they're so violent and usually they're supported by state violence, I think that if violence if it's necessary that we have to do it, then it's fine. <laughs> it's kind of funny when uh, me and my friend were joking, we're like, remember when we used to call ourselves a pacif pacifist? <laughs> but um, I think someone also, and my last name, Pass, means peace in Spanish. Oh. So I always find it funny, I was talking to someone about it, but they're like, you know, just, they're like, peace doesn't always have to be peaceful, or maybe you don't you have to be in peaceful to finally get peace for everyone. So I don't see it as there being a moral high ground and I see it more as them trying to like make sure we can de defend ourselves you know like like the KKK can have guns but you know we gotta obliterate uh, the Black Panthers <laughs> you know I don't know how do you feel about that um yeah kind of similar and I just think about how like how much violence and death you know, happen to, to form the US and like the genocide of the native people and then the enslavement of, you know, African people and, um, you know, violence has been a huge part of US history, but it's always been on the side of the oppressors to the oppressed. And it seems like it's always okay and justified for yeah. the people in power, whether it's the military or the police or even denying people health care that's a form of violence denying people yeah. housing is yeah. a form of violence and yeah I used to think like I was kind of more like anti-gun um, yeah yeah that you know it's important for like 
socialists or people on the left more like broadly to yeah be able to arm and defend themselves and their communities because people on the you know far right are like armed to the teeth with with all of these kinds of things and I think um yeah I think sometimes it can be can be justified um and I didn't always think that necessarily yeah I mean, me, me either I've definitely always been and I mean I think I still would be I think I don't know I think as I got older I kind of when I reread something it was just like oh I'm a communist but also like I don't have to uh, give up communism to and uh, being an anarchist and like a lot of it is similar I can be an anarchist communist but we you know it led me to like become been like this thing is just to keep me suppressed and it's already a violent state because I've always been and I always am and I guess like we, I don't know like I mean there's social workers who will be social workers because of the money and I don't blame them it's just like it's not great money but at least because everyone's suffering all the time you'll always have a job, always be work <laughs> you know always be work but I mean I think all the most part like people do really want to do this thing and I think yeah social workers we also we want everyone to always have like the best, you know, best well-being. But right now, it's just protection. And again, it's really um, kind of terrifying that a lot of people don't talk about it or they reject it. I remember during the summer, I was trying to help with like this group and organizing, but I had to leave, and then I didn't do, do organizing for a while because they mostly ignore how like uh, anxious I was about like um, the violence from the far right and. They kind of just brushed it off and like you know it it's like you know now it's becoming more apparent and then everyone's like oh gosh what's going on and it's like we've been trying to tell you forever it's just not a thing about a person of color or like a woman or i mean it doesn't help but the thing is too, is these people will obliterate anything anything they consider like a political enemy anyone because so you know you should be worried you should be uh, we should all work in some sort of defense like um i've been thinking more about it but i know it's sort of like in the internet then i'll get tracked down for this but like you know like reading the history of like uh the john brown club or um or like uh i think there's even the seattle rifle uh, socialist rifle yeah. association yeah. Um, which, you know, I actually was talking to someone about it because I was thinking about getting more involved with it. In my life, I never thought about it, about owning a gun in the end. So I always had that mindset. Um, but it, especially after this really scary thing where I was, I got into a, like a lift and then it was the first time I heard someone talk about conspiracy, about like, you know, the Democrats. And he was just like, the Nazis were socialists. I'm like, oh my God, a white supremacist is driving me. And then I realized I'm with this person alone in the car. Um, and that started to freak me out. And I was, and more and more, I was just like, oh my God, maybe this is the first time in my life, which I, I might want to own a gun. And yeah. it, it, because it is, and you know what, it, now that I know maybe too, it's like maybe liberal propaganda to sort of like make the gun, um, this thing that you know it's like us as progressives shouldn't use but also makes sense too for oppression because um you know i think i'm not sure how it is but like you know if you're quote unquote a felon and if they even give you the choice you have to either give up like um your right to own a firearm or your right to uh, vote so that is just to either or you're giving one of your rights you know and how is that fair how is that um good and i think now that it makes more and more sense you know because <laughs> people who are the same thing um tend to find like okay maybe we can do this well like i want to be like god this white supremacist must must be so inept because i'm like look you have way more leeway you can get in a cop space and you don't get pepper spray but are you so inept that you can't do anything right it's so but yeah, I think no. And like someone jokes they're like, well, $600 might be able to get us some sort of mirror. <laughs> but no, I think- Or a guillotine it, or something. Yeah, oh yeah, we'll put all money together. <laughs> hey, I had me this girl, she, uh, she's really, this high school friend. She, I don't think it's called, I don't know if it's a catapult, it's a catapult like thing, it's called like a trebuchet. Yeah. But so 
we built one for her physics class, but really she built one and then I was there and she's like, you, we can say we did it. I was just like, whatever you say, Sarah, uh, she's amazing. She, but yeah, so yeah, maybe we can all pull together. But no, I think it's actually would be the smart thing. I think for me now, again, because morality is like, it's a thing that can shift for me. Like that. Yeah. now the moral thing is to like, kind of like learn more about this to like be safer to or also because you know in case of something goes on like who's how do I protect, protect myself in, yeah. in the community so um now I think that it, it would be negligent because now I feel like I, it's so important to me that I'm like okay I have to look and look more into this like also that's why also like yeah kind of like outing or not or whatever but like making sure that I identify white supremacists, that's something too I'm always interested in and like communication. So that's always something too that I try to remind myself. I need to follow more. Um, I wanna watch like YouTubers. I'm like, I know there's a lot of leftist YouTubers, but I'm like, is there any like, uh, you know, ones where it says about them, you know, talking about, uh, you know, Nazis or uh, white right wing violence. And because it also shows, I was reading now that uh, the right like fascists now are using like uh symbols from like the mexican dirty war oh. i don't even i never even i don't even know what the mexican dirty war is like i know about the argentina dirty war not much so now i want to kind of look up the symbols but also like i feel like you know knowing the enemy is so much that there's to do and i don't i think just again ignoring it is sort of like like oh hitler please don't take germany <laughs> I mean, don't take Poland. I'm gonna do it anyway. Oh no! How did this happen? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I I'm glad. Oh my. This is my nephew Damon. Oh, what's his name? Damon. Damon. Hi, Damon. Oh. <laughs> Hi. Okay. What do you think about socialism, Damon? Yeah. What do you think about the class struggle? <laughs> I think he would support it, hopefully. I think, you know, he he looks like a smart fellow. I think he yeah. would. I, I you know, uh, someone, like, there's no, I don't, like, there's no gatekeeping, but someone, I once read, someone was just like, oh, like, what do people mean, like, when do they become a socialist? I'm like, socialism was just, like, organic to me, and I was just yeah. like, yeah, I'm like, I don't want to say I was born a socialist, but I feel like when I was a kid, and I'm not sure if it has to do with, like, coming from, uh, you know, a developing country or the global south or third world country or whatever from Central America, um, you see poverty in your eyes so much. Like, there's a lot of poverty, abject, horrible poverty in America, but it's almost like hidden or not talked about. Yeah. But in, in Latin America, it's just there in front of your eyes all the time. Like, um, shanty towns, I can, I know them pretty well. Like, like I mean, I don't know if this is a reason why, you know, t tents, I'm okay with dealing with them because I'm like, oh, this is easy compared to like the shanty towns. Not that I ever went there. My, my family's like, now that I'm older, I realize how conservative they are. But, and then I used to say like, oh, I know how to solve poverty. Cause, and my mom would be like, how? And then, cause my dad at the time, uh, like he was like a civic engineer work on construction. I'm like, well, my dad is just gonna build enough housing for everyone. Yeah. And there's just gonna be a bartering system. And then there's not gonna be high, uh, highways to go like, no, there will be highways, but it's bikes or whatever, or something, but not cars. So this was me at like, <laughs> like five or six creating my perfect socialist commune so i don't know i think for me and i think a lot of people if you ask them you know would you want this thing and they'll go yeah uh, oh do you oh gosh uh oh god um there's sucker carlson and then there's oh i forget his name um the uh he's, he's the reverend like he's black he was his friend of bernie sanders uh, uh, William Barber? No, no, Cornel West. I think Cornel West is like, has like some sort of religious title too. Oh, okay. Or whatever. So Cornel West, I finally remember. But oh, Cornel West. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
to uh, Tucker Carlson. He's like, wouldn't you want this? Wouldn't you want this? And he's like, yeah, yeah. And Joe Carlson was like, well, if that's socialism, then yeah, I, I would want it. And it is just, again, just a bad campaign because yeah, why wouldn't you want it? It's like the natural thing. If you ask people like, don't you want everyone to be happy? And most people would be like, yeah, I guess like, in- yeah, and if you actually like explain what it is in practice, it's like, yeah. like the fire department, that's socialism. That's like oh, your tax yeah. dollars paying for the collective yeah. good, Medicare, yeah. Medicare for all, yeah. higher education. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's just looking out for the fellow needs of, of everybody. It's like, I think like you're saying, that is our natural in- inclination to want to help people and make sure they're not starving make sure they have a house and we have to be kind of tricked and indoctrinated to think that's not how things should be you know yeah my perfect example is socialism and that's because i worked there for like a year and a half and if i wasn't getting an msw i would be getting a master in library science but library (laughs) to me are like the perfect example of socialism because you know it's accessible to everyone who can i mean i just still have to get a library card so there is that but to anyone who needs a library card and you know everyone's taxes are paying for it but it doesn't matter who you are everyone has access to this thing and and you know so for me library server because it not only it has media but it also has like programming it has classes it has computers especially like if you're homeless and don't have um you know, access to a computer or you need somewhere to be during the day. I mean, that's something that I really hate too. Talking about morality, it's the fact, you know, that Seattle will do things like violently remove people from the camps, but not provide them with um, housing in any of these thousands of multiple of empty buildings. Nope. And, you know, the library was a place um, where people could be that it was not driven by profit or whatever. It's not like we're in your coffee shop and you feel pressured to buy something. Buy something. Like, yeah. You, you only have the right to sit down if you're going to spend some capital notes to the library. And usually people who work at libraries, I don't know if it's because of the job or, uh, or whatever, they tend to be very, very helpful. I think that was kind of my sort of entrance a lot in like as a public worker, public servant was working in a library. So I really like them, but I also think that um, they are basically the most socialist thing that I can think about. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, all of our tax money goes to it, but you can use it in every equal way possible. Yeah, and, and, it, and it benefits yeah. benefits everybody, no matter if you don't have to qualify or anything. It's like you yeah. have access to those services because you're a person. Like that's how it should be yeah. for everything, you know? Yeah, it's just a place like, you know, or there's things to learn. Like there's just a lot of again enri- enri- enrichment and things where it's like, it's for your personal growth or your personal self care. It doesn't have to be again, because of money or because you have to learn this thing. Like nowadays they're like, we're teaching our kids to code um, at age, you know, 25 months or something or whatever. <laughs> and it's like, why, you know? And it's because that is the, Think that it's seen as the way to uh, have more capital. And I read somewhere where, like, you know, capital capitalists will just create artificial demand, like, because they're like, oh, you know, coding makes so much money. So, or the big tech companies. So, we have all these programs to teach more kids to code. So, then can have all these coders. So, when they have all these co- coders, they're like, well, we could fire someone because we probably could get this by now or whatever. So they create their own demand and then they get to dictate or education or what is seen as valuable. So libraries are nice because, you know, it's not, you're not there. You're not, no one's there to judge you. I, when I was in high school, my favorite place was like the high, the library. I also would find the weirdest books there uh, <laughs> for kids, like books that you do, don't see at the store. So yeah. That's, that's socialism. Just take the library and expand it to other things and it would be, it'd be nice, you know? Would it be nice for everyone? So why are you fighting it so hard? Yes. It's not bad. Right. <laughs> You're like, yeah, like, why? You're starting to get a little restless. So how about one final question? So like that original bill that the house passed that was full of all that garbage, but did include the $600 checks and 
um, you know, expanded unemployment. If you were a member of Congress or the Senate, would you have <laughs> voted for that, you think? The bill? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think, I think I would have, I would have been so angry. I think I would have cried and maybe <laughs> considered quitting my job. Yeah. Um, but I feel like the desperation and people to only get these six hundred dollars, uh, I guess would make me vote yes. But yeah. then try to come up with a second plan. But I don't know, like you know, if but like I said, I'm radical in other ways. Like otherwise, like then this is what I ha hate. Like they force you to do these things that are just will kill you inside but if you don't then you're like well more people will die so yeah. i guess the answer would be yes what about you um i don't know because i definitely agree with like what you're saying um but i wonder if like enough people had not voted for it if yeah. they've been able to go back to the kind of drawing board because they wanted to include all that other garbage if they could have you know yeah. expanded the unemployment make it retroactive more than six hundred dollars stimulus but yeah it's it's tough i would i'd probably just lean towards no just because of all the other yeah that was like attached and that it was yeah. five thousand pages and and rushed through but yeah it is very very difficult choice to make i think I think, I think, yeah, I think for me, I would just be like lying to myself. I'm like, it's okay. It's just for now. Then right now we'll start working on this thing. And I think that it's going to work out, but it's not, it's not like it's, and yeah, you're right. Those things. And I wish, yeah, if I, you had not told me about it, I wouldn't have found out. And it's like three different acts. There's like the case act, there's yeah. like the streaming act and there's the other ones. I have to look more into it. But like you said, it's like, 5,000 pages, like, yeah, who exactly. read that? And they're like, we're gonna, we're gonna print it on parchment paper. I'm like, <laughs> I have I have, way, I have some ways to cut government spending. <laughs> yeah. So that's, thank you. It was nice meeting yeah. you. What's his name again? Damon. Uh, Damon, nice meeting you, Damon. Bye. You know, support the class struggle. <laughs> yeah, Damon, you can You're join the Socialist Rifle hey. Association when you grow up. Yes, or Sarah, Sarah baby, Sarah baby clubs. Uh, unites your kindergarten. Exactly. <laughs> unites your cousins. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. All right. Well, Have thank you. Night. Bye. Bye. Bye.